Hello, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. I'm Danny, and today, Grid.com talks with Sonny Mullen, the Director of Outreach for Help Hope Live. If you haven't heard of them yet, Help Hope Live supports community-based fundraising for people with unmet medical expenses and related costs due to cell and organ transplants or even catastrophic injuries and illnesses. Now, before we begin, I always say this, if you new here to this podcast, remember to press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app. Now, <laughs> let's begin. Hi, Sonny. Welcome to our podcast. Hi, Danny. Thank <laughs> you for having me. Absolutely. I'm happy to be here. It's our pleasure. I found it so very interesting to talk with organizations that are not just fundraising for themselves, but they are also trying to help people keep do doing this job because it's it's a very intricate process, right? It's not just trying to make a raffle and sell it out. It's Oh, yeah. Fundraising is not easy. It's not easy. All. So tell me, how did you begin to working on this? Not just this uh, organization, but you got into this idea. So my background, you know, I've been with Hope Hope Live now for just over six years. I just had my sixth anniversary at the beginning of August. And I actually was working in New York in television for a very long time, for about 10 years or so, and wanted to move home to the Philadelphia area, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I have a background in nonprofits and doing service work and doing volunteering. And I just knew that I wanted to make that shift from television, that 24 hour world to more of a little bit stable position, nine to five ish, but yet being able to go somewhere that had a good mission that I could help tell their story. And I, you know, I moved home six months, nine months goes by, you know how looking for jobs is even six, seven years ago. And I had a friend who worked at Hope Hope Live, who was one of my good friends from high school and said, you know what, come check us out. And it's, that's how it always works, right? It's networking. It's never let me fill out a resume and fill out an application. So the job that was, uh, that was available was processing the fund requests that we process for our clients every day. And I initially was like, well, I'm not a finance person. I do, I study television, I'm communications, networking. And she was like, you can definitely do this. Don't worry. And so I came in and was able to do that job. And she was right. Processing the fund requests for our clients, it was very much communicating. I was working with our clients on a day-to-day -day -day basis, making sure their bills were correct, making sure we were paying on time, processing their bills, being very detail-oriented and all of that. So that's the, the short end of how I got to Help Hope Live. But really, like I said, when I moved from New York to Philadelphia, moving home, I wanted to find an organization that had a good mission that I really was pow powerful and I really wanted to share because I have a younger brother who lives with a genetic disorder. It's called Grin One. And so he has, he's 26. So he's, you know, he's pretty fantastic. He's been living his life, but he's pretty compromised. And so that's been my life too for the last 26 years. And I wanted to, be able to tell his story almost and help others like him and others in that community. And when Hope Hope Live was brought to me by my friend, the two worlds really just came together perfectly. Because as you mentioned in our, in our mission statement, we help individuals living with catastrophic injuries and illnesses, those needing life-saving transplants to go into their communities and fundraise for their medical expenses and related costs. So these are people that I'm dealing with every day that are people like my family, people like my brother. And it just right away, I knew I could tell this story. I knew I could be passionate about it. And I was hooked. And so I did that fund request process for about two and a half years. And then my goal really was to be in this position, to have more of an outreach, to be able to share the mission, tell the story. And this didn't exist. So I helped create the outreach program. And it was something that we really needed. I hope Hope Live has been around for almost 40 years and they've been doing an amazing job for those 40 years. But we are growing at a pace now that we need dedicated outreach. We need people because before then our client services coordinators were doing that and they were doing a great job, but it's just not possible to work full time with our, with our clients. 
and do outreach full time. So I was able to create the outreach department. It's myself and my coworker. Most of our transplant and our cancer outreach, I deal mainly with our injury and illness outreach. And we're, you know, taking the, the country by storm, bringing Help Hope Lives mission, helping educate and telling the story. And that's what we're here to do. And that's what we're really loving to do. So that's really what brought me to Help Hope Live, my friend from high school and my brother. Wow. So I'm really happy to still be here. That's, that's a fantastic story. I love hearing about it. And it's it's interesting because so many people that I interview here have similar stories to yours. And the conclusion I always get is that some careers are great and then, you know, we can feel completely fulfilled with them. But sometimes yeah. there are some things in life that are just hard to find. And then you need to create this 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 movement in your life, right? And find what you're looking for. And these connections, they are always so fruitful and it's wonderful to hear it. And you mentioned that uh, the organization has around 40 years, right, of existence. And how, um, did, how did it begin? So yeah, so Help Hope Live was founded here in the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania region in Southeast Pennsylvania. And we were actually founded by a heart transplant surgeon at Temple University who in the early 80s was looking to help his patients fundraise for their very experimental heart transplants. Dr. Jack Kolf and his wife, Pat, Pat was a nurse, and they brought a group of friends together and they started what was at that point the National Transplant Assist Fund. So NTAF, we were just assisting the transplant community for the first 20 years of our existence. And they were doing a great job. They were really helping and they were a national organization, but still very focused on the Philadelphia area. And then in the early 2000s, we had a local student here in the Philadelphia region get injured in a sledding accident. And she knew our model and her family came to us and asked if we could do the same thing for the injury community that we were doing for the transplant community. And so we opened our doors even more to the catastrophic injury community. And at that point, it went through a name change. We became Help Hope Live. And then even more so, in the last five to six years, we've really opened our doors even wider now to the catastrophic illness community. To the point that we're now assisting anyone living with any type of catastrophic medical condition that is experiencing a financial hardship. So we have our roots here in Philadelphia, but we are national. We've started assisting individuals in living in Puerto Rico this year as well. And kind of because of COVID and the pandemic, with everyone working from home, it gave us the opportunity to also make some new hires nationally. So we now have client services coordinators in Oklahoma, in Ohio, when we're able to actually have a more national reach, we have brand ambassadors all over the country as well. So kind of silver lining, you know, you try to find the good things in some of this stuff, but in bringing those groups together, we're now able to have a more national reach as well. And so we're really excited that we're able to just continue to help more and more people. But it's really the work of Dr. Jack, Pat, uh, Jack Kolf and his wife, Pat, and you know, they're still very much part of our community and we are really excited next year to kick off our 40th anniversary as we, you know, really start celebrating and start bringing some stories to light from these 40 years. <laughs> I love to hear this because it, it really shows how you grew from the necessity and then from people getting together, right? And that's the whole sense of focusing on communities and helping them to work out. And now just so we can all have this idea of, or at least a better understanding of how complicated things can get for anyone that needs for there is a need for a constant medical care because we're not talking talking just about a person that well unfortunately fell and broke an arm that's expensive yeah, no. but yeah. it's another it thing yeah. yeah yes but this is a it's a continuous process right yes. you're focusing man, man, mainly on that guide us a little bit through the process of how complicated someone can get into uh, the, paying all the bills and how expensive it can be and you know how how does that all work? Sure so every community we deal with is very different. Transplant community they deal with fundraising and their medical expenses up front 
once you're told you need a transplant, you might not necessarily be listed on the transplant list yet. But a lot of our medical centers, and I will always just put the disclaimer that I'm speaking from someone living in the United States with the medical system in the United States, but a lot of medical centers will tell their patients up front they need to have a certain amount of money available to them before they can even get listed on the transplant list so that they can then guarantee, I, I think they can guarantee that they'll be able to then take care of the donor organ after the fact. And so they come to us very early in their process, knowing that they need $7,000, $10,000 available to them before they can even think about getting listed. On the other hand, the catastrophic injury community, it's mainly individuals that experience the spinal cord injury, experience a traumatic brain injury. And in those catastrophic instances, a lot of times the community will come together right away. And right at the time of injury is a really crucial time for you know, heightened awareness, the stories out there, people will come together and the individual might be in, acute, in an acute care center for a month, three months, then they get moved down to a rehab center, then outpatient center. So their treatment right at the time of injury, right away could be six to nine months. So think about how expensive that could be. And then you think if you are, if you're living with a spinal cord injury, for the most part, you might need a wheelchair. Best case scenario, you might need crutches. You're going to need home modifications. You might need a ramp to help you get into your house now. You might need a, an adaptive vehicle. These things really add up, especially in the first year of injury. Your expenses could be almost a million dollars. And so right away, that medical crisis turns into a financial crisis. And that is what we at Help Hope Live are here to prevent. We want individuals to come and start fundraising with us at the time of diagnosis, at the time of injury, so that we can help lessen that financial crisis. And even individuals living with catastrophic illnesses, those are individuals that have experienced a stroke, that live with multiple sclerosis, cerebral palsy, Ehlers-Danlos. The list, unfortunately, really is never ending at this point, and especially with genome testing, we're seeing so many more and more diagnoses coming out. These individuals need so many different types of expenses throughout their entire lifetime. We are here to help them fundraise for their lifetime. So that really adds up. And where, especially in America, our system unfortunately is broken is the fact that if individuals are living on government assistance, asset-based benefits, if they are having, you know, if they're using Medicaid, if they are on SSI or SSDI, they sometimes, most of the time, will have a certain cap on how much money they can be seen as having as income. So, because if they all of a sudden are seen as having too much, if it's deemed as too much income, the government might think they don't need that assistance anymore. And so what does that even look like? They, sometimes that limit is $2,000. How are you supposed to live off an income of $2,000? And so a lot of times individuals right off the bat will use a fundraising to go fund me. That's something they know, it's an everyday name. They'll start fundraising there. A friend or a family member will open a GoFundMe campaign. Uh, account to get, you know, help their loved ones. The issues with that versus coming to Help Hope Live to open a Help Hope Live campaign are really tenfold at this point. We've seen this too many times. So GoFundMe and a lot, I'm sure most of the other platforms as well, they're hooked up to a bank account and can be counted as the individual's income. So if that happens, you could be seen as having too much income from the fundraising that your loved ones are doing out of the goodness of, your, of their hearts. And we had a client recently come to us before she came to Help Hope Live. She went to GoFundMe to fundraise. She was able to raise $6,500 towards a van, which seems amazing. Unfortunately, the government came in and saw that that was too much money. 
and they took away her housing voucher and she was going to be homeless. And so a friend of hers from a center of independent living here in New Jersey told her about Help Hope Live. And now she's safely and responsibly doing her fundraising. Because when you fundraise with Help Hope Live, we manage the funds. They are Help Hope Live assets. So they are never the individual's assets. They should not affect the individual's asset-based benefits or become taxable income to them or their family. And we really safeguard those funds for the individual, for the donor. We're really here to prevent any kind of fraud that could happen because we see that so many times with those other platforms. And the fact that when you're fundraising through Help Hope Live, those funds are guaranteed to go toward medical expenses and expenses related to that individual's medical condition. Where again, with those other platforms, you aren't guaranteed as to where those funds are going. And because we're a nonprofit, all, tax, all donations are tax deductible and anyone's eligible for any matching gifts that they might get from their employer. So there's so many different reasons to come to Help Hope Live versus other platforms, but that really is the struggle, is that right off the bat, at the time of diagnosis, at the time of injury, you're already looking at a $50,000, $100,000, $500,000 bill in the next six months. We have some clients who are, are on medications that are $1,100 every single month. How are you supposed to do that? And so it is hard. Our clients do, you know, they come to us, they say, I, I'm uncomfortable asking for help. I don't want to do this. We give them the support to feel comfortable doing that, to figure out their community, to go out into the community and make them and therefore their community understand that they're not asking for help. They are asking for individuals to allow them to live their lives. We're here to help individuals live their lives as independently as possible, whatever that looks like for them. So it's, I mean, it's unfortunate that we have to exist. We always joke about this in, in the office, but we're happy to be here while we do. And so we do hope that we can help as many people as possible prevent those financial crises. Well, I am happy that you're there. <laughs> it's like, I, 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 I agree and understand the joke. <laughs> but, you know, it's, I, I think it was such a clever way to, you know, control this, the situation, which is completely unthinkable, right? You, it's not like you're actually trying to deceive the government. Considering all of these efforts, my most important question for you, and I think that's always the most important, but in this case, it's so vital. <laughs> what is the best way to help you keep doing this wonderful work and also to uh, help donate to the campaigns that are going on? Thank you, because it is important, because especially after these last two years or so, we're just so lucky here, quite frankly. Um, first and foremost, our website, it's www.helphopelive.org. Certainly take a look. At the very least, the littlest, the littlest amount you could do is look at our website, read our blog, read about our community, and get educated on Help Hope Live because you never know who might need our assistance. If you have a friend or family member in the United States and we can help them, that's a win. So just read, read our website and read up on us. First, that is, you know, if you can't afford to do anything else, you can afford to do that. But second and most important, like I said, so go to that same website, www.helphopelive.org top right corner, hit that donate button. You can help us continue to do what we're doing for our clients. And as you had said at the top, we do, we do our own fundraising as an organization. We have a gala in the fall, we have a 5K in the spring, and we're always working throughout the year to get donations to keep us as an organization running. And then we're helping our clients fundraise in their honor. So we need our own funds to be able to keep us doing what we're able to do for our clients. Um, you know, check us out on all social media. We are at Help Hope Live Org, Help Hope Live O-R-G, on Instagram, on Twitter. You can find us on Facebook. And we really, we share a lot of stories about our community and 
what we're doing and what they're doing to continue to live their lives, which is really fantastic. So you might even be able to find a random client that you want to donate toward, which would be amazing. Um, so that is first and foremost, read up on us, help get educated. If you have anyone, if you, you can reach out on our website, you can call our 800 number if you want to learn more. And I don't know, is my information going to be anywhere? It's, I'm very happy to give my information. You guys are allowed to email me. If, any, if anyone listening or watching is a medical professional or belongs to a support group that might be interested, I am so happy to give a webinar, to speak, to do what we can to help educate about Help Hope Live. That is my entire job. That's what we're here to do. And we're here to help spread our word as much as possible. So educate yourself, donate, help us educate others. That is the important thing. Absolutely. And we can make sure that people get your information. And yeah. again, everyone listening, we're going to include this uh, and the website on the description of this episode and on our website as well. So you can check them out and see the information and get in touch. And please donate, help out yes, and please. spread the word. That's the thing. <laughs> Thank, thank you so much. And thank you. I just, yeah, I just want to close one button just to remind people, you know, we help individuals living in the United States, living in Puerto Rico of all ages, anyone living with a catastrophic medical condition, we can help them fundraise. So come on over. Let us know what we can do for you. Please, guys, please listen to this woman. She knows what she's saying. <laughs> <laughs> she knows what she's saying. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sonny. This was a lovely You're very time. welcome. Thank you. Absolutely. Anytime. <laughs> oh, well, we'll do. We'll get a, a, a checkup. Please. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to see how things are going in a few months. Yeah, please if do. People really uh, stood up for the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> and for everybody listening also, thank you. And well, you know, if you enjoyed this episode, remember to press subscribe on YouTube or in the podcast app, because that shows the algorithm that this is an important conversation and then more people can get and learn about the importance of help, hope, live. Check their website, donate, and see you at the next episode.